people who work at remote places like forest officers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? Part 2. Please make sure you share and subscribe our channel thread tonic. Account 1. I used to work in a ship and were usually gone 3 to 10 months at a time. I worked night shift, so this meant I would sleep in the sleeping quarters during daytime with either just me or a handful of other crew members, where usually there'd be 20 to 30 of us in there. It wasn't so bad. Actually, I really liked because it's a lot more peaceful sleeping during the day. You don't hear anybody else snoring or someone's footsteps because they have to piss or something like that. All you can hear is the light creak of the walls and the floors of the ship, and all you can feel is the sway of it on the ocean. A bit haunting and creepy of you really think about it, but I like it. All that ended when there was a short period of time was literally only two of us in there. Or at least that's what I thought. I started hearing light taps across the room. At first they were light taps. Then it would get a bit faster, sometimes it'll get a bit louder, I'd ignore it if it wasn't so utterly annoying. I look at where the other guy's is sleeping, and he seems to be fast asleep, accompanied by his light snoring, second day. There it goes again. I tried to follow the sound, but for some reason it bounced around the room like an echo. Eventually it comes to an abrupt halt, so I try to sleep it off. During work at night, I tried to ask my mate about it, but he said he was too tired to even notice. I guess I'm alone on this pursuit. Third day, I take my pursuit one step further by not sleeping right away. I'd be fully awake when it starts, so I'll have a better chance of discovering the source. There it goes again. This time I go from one empty rack to the next until finally it was loud as fuck, tapping in progress. My heart was thumping like a jackhammer. I pulled the curtain to the side. There laid the biggest dude I'm ever seen on the ship, holding his dick mid-stroke. You have no idea the speech I prepared for this guy, in my head, for keeping me up for several days, but at that exact moment I had no idea what to say. Of course I gave out a small yelp, which didn't help the situation. I never thought I'd be locking eyes with another dude while he's gripping his dong when I began this honorable pursuit. With the current situation, I mustered my best attempt at displaying my annoyance. It somehow came out as an apology, followed by, I keep hearing tapping noises. He hadn't said anything yet, but at that exact moment, I realized that his elbow, that which belonged to the fapping arm, is resting right on the wall, probably banging on it over and over and over. I didn't wait for a reply. I nodded my head, kind of rolled my eye, and walked away. It will never be easy trying to avoid a big guy like him every day in the same sleeping quarters. Account 2. When I was a kid living in Queensland, Australia, I used to... Bush bash meaning walk off the beaten track through thick scrub, I knew the national park my house backed onto like the back of my hand. I knew from the topography where I was at all times, both my parents were ex-military and had a sort of hands-off, trusting me even as young as 12 to venture off on my own into the wilderness, so I could just pack a lunch, and my sister and neighborhood friend would come with. We'd head off early in the morning, returning just before sunset usually. Once, when I, the oldest, was about 14, we had been following creek beds and bashing over heavily forested hills towards an area I'd never been. We came down a hill through a gully full of ferns and followed a dry creek bed for another hour. The sides of the creek became steep and rocky. Before long, we were passing through a gorge. As we emerged from the gorge, we noticed what looked like a dwelling. Being idiot kids, we wanted to see what was up. It looked abandoned at first, but as we got closer, we saw that tarps had been affixed to the ramshackle structure. Chicken, wire surrounded what looked like a pen just outside. As my eyes traveled across it, I suddenly caught another pair of eyes looking directly back at me. A Rottweiler. We started slowly edging back away from the property, but it was too late. The dog started going nuts and, worried that it was coming after us, or at least alerting the persons living in the hut, we bolted. I went back to the area a few times, but not too close to the abode itself, and found discarded bones from small game and other bits and pieces, spent. Twenty-two casings and such. As an adult and knowing the area, it's very likely we stumbled across either a homeless person camping out or a meth lab. As the area, as I would find out as an adult, was absolutely riddled with meth labs. 
Account 3. Some friends and I were fishing a small pond just after dark for catfish. We started to hear sounds coming off the water like someone throwing softball-sized rocks, but they were coming from all over the pond. We thought someone was messing with us, and we called out a few times for them to stop, but we eventually got freaked out and left. Cut to a few years later. I'm fishing a different pond and hear the same sound. Turns out it was a beaver slapping its tail on the water to drive me from its territory. When beavers become problems in rivers, they relocate them to ponds in town. Account 4. Spent a summer in Wyoming going to BLM land and other remote locations collecting data on bats and herpetofauna. Heard a lot of weird noises like mountain lions screaming, deer snorting, what sounded like owls fighting. Woke up one morning to find two bull moose sleeping 20 yards behind my tent. All of this was part of the job. Until one night, a truck was driving towards us when we were on a BLM square in the southwestern part of the state. The truck was going overland, no road, and was slowly driving at us. It stopped about 100 yards away, turned off the lights, and we could see a person get out. They walked a full circle around us at 100 yards away, got back in the truck, and turned around. This was after dark, and this shadowy figure did a complete circle around us. You could hear them walking through the sagebrush, and I'm sure they could hear us talking. We packed up after that and drove to a hotel an hour away. I called the office and told them I was taking a gun when we went back out. Didn't like having the bear mace as our only defense, edit. BLM stands for Bureau of Land Management. Account 5. I work for a power company restoring power after a storm. Was working when a lady came up complaining that her power went out. We explained to her that's why we were there and she should have power back soon. She said, oh good, my son went down in the basement and now I can't find him. I went with her with a flashlight down the road to a rundown house that was partially caved in. She walked inside and I went to follow. As soon as I walked into the door, she disappeared from my sight and I called for her multiple times. No one responded, so I ran back to our work truck to call for help. A man that was living on her street called to me asking what's wrong, and I told him the situation. He looked at me with a cold stare and said a mom and her son died in that house four years ago. I'm still shook to this day. Account 6 I used to work in the Gulf of Mexico on oil rigs for years, and it may not exactly be creepy but I found it really unsettling. In deep, open water, the water itself is really clear, so everyone can plainly see all the tuna and barracudas hanging around the rig waiting for the onboard cook to throw off whatever food waste he needs to. Every once in a while, a huge, great white shark would swim up from underneath and snatch a tuna, and it really took like less than a second. They're really scary. Account 7 I worked for a guy that spearfished underneath the rigs out in the Gulf. He said it was perfect since there were tons of fish underneath, and the sharks would never go between the legs, just wait for a fish to leave. Plus, the view was amazing, looking down and seeing nothing but abyss. He loved it. I can only imagine how scared I would be. Account 8. Spent a summer doing conservation work out in the absolute middle of nowhere in Wyoming was part of a crew that would spend two weeks camping in remote places to do manual labor in places machines couldn't get to. For this story, we were building new hiking-biking trails in the back portion of a designated wilderness area in a high-altitude desert. This means that the nearest civilization was a two-hour car ride to a town of 41 people in a sandy soil area where tracks last forever, it was the middle of our stint during the early part of the night where everyone else had gone to bed, but I stayed up to read, so maybe 11.30 or so. Still pitch black outside, clouds had covered stars, so my headlamp was probably the only light on in a 40-mile radius. Suddenly I hear footsteps walking around our camp and head towards the tents from where I was in the community tent. That sound immediately put me on edge as I felt the hair on my arms raise and my adrenaline spike. I recall thinking to myself that two things are very wrong since the person was not using a light to see and the footsteps were not coming towards me from the tents. Rather, it was the opposite. Within the four seconds it took me to drop my book, get up, and turn the corner of the tent to cast my light on the sleeping tents. The sound had stopped, but I saw tracks in dirt before me. 
looked like they came from one end of camp, looked into my tent, walked through the sleeping tents and kept going out of camp again. I don't know if I was making too much noise or not by walking around, but the rest of my crew ended up waking up and asking me what was going on from inside their tents. After explaining what I found, they all got up to look at the boot prints in the dirt. They were damn near perfect copies of my own boots except for one small thing. I had a rock stuck in my treads that messed up the symmetry. I was wearing fairly common work boots, except I also happened to wear U.S. size 15 double-wide boots, so there was no way in hell this was one of the other crew members. I don't think any of us slept much that night. Never saw or heard anything more after that night. A light rain removed the tracks a couple days later, but I do remember none of us were willing to step on the prints themselves and choose to step over them like cracks in the sidewalk. Account 9. Really depends on your current living situation. I currently work for the USDA. I would recommend any of the government organizations, federal or state, if you can afford the smaller paycheck but the stable schedule is more important to your lifestyle, Switched from private industry when we had our first kid. The private industry is where all the money is. But you'll need a degree to advance past entry level. Also, be prepared for travel. One thing I will say is, don't skip over the energy sector. Oil, mining, gas, coal, and all the others are heavily regulated, which means they stay on top of environmental issues and have positions to manage such things, if you like, over time. Looking into hazmat or emergency response companies can give you interesting stories. I particularly enjoyed fishing anhydrous ammonia tanks out of flood water with a crane for two weeks. I won't name specific companies since they are all different based on location. Account 10. I'd like to think it was a bear just sitting there smoking while trying to find a way to get to the snacks dangling in the air. I don't like to think what was going through that guy's head as he stood there watching the hunter sleep in a bag tent. Account 11. My parents live pretty far back in the country and have one neighboring house. The neighbors would let their basset hound outside for about 10 minutes to use the bathroom every morning. One morning they let him out and he didn't come back inside. After a couple minutes, they walked out to his favorite bathroom spot and found his head, judging from the tracks. A mountain lion had ambushed him and apparently torn his head off before carrying the body away. What I thought was the creepiest part was that the family hadn't heard a sound. Account 12. I spent several seasons working at a remote field camp in Antarctica, over 1,000 kilometers from the main station in McMurdo. Every once in a while, a squaw bird or Antarctic tern would accidentally end up following one of the small plane's twin otter out to our camp. Once there, though, they'd basically be stranded with no way to get back to the coast. I'd get out of my tent some mornings and see a lonely tern circling overhead, knowing it was a dead bird flying. It was quite creepy. Along these lines, when birds or seals, do die down there. It's so cold and dry that their bodies don't decay either. They essentially mummify outside McMurdo at Scott's Discovery Hut. There is still a perfectly preserved seal carcass from 1912 sitting by the entrance of the hut. Account 13. I also worked out on the ice at Bird Surface Camp, traveled 1,200 kilometers for shallow core work and one of the recon cores for WAYAS, ITAYS program UNH, Maine. We had a skua show up one day while we were on Traverse, had not seen it prior, and it was not at the camp. It was eerie seeing him so far out there. Almost as eerie as seeing the abandoned radio tower sticking up out of the ice at Bird, from the detonated and abandoned Cold War station they had, having left in a hurry, they allowed the station to be covered in ice and eventually detonated the entrance when following. Years visitors to Bird Surface Camp were going inside to check out the old camp. Account 14. I've worked in Canada's north for a few years now in oil and gas. It's pretty creepy when during night shift you realize a moose has just been standing at the tree line, staring you down for an unknown length of time, or finding bear tracks crossing the tracks you just made five minutes ago. Honestly, the silence of a snowy forest in the dead of night, 100s of kilometers away from anything, is pretty spooky. When your only contact to the outside world is a radio channel nobody's listening to, you feel pretty alone. Account 15. I was the creepy occurrence. 
I live on a ranch off of a quite dirt road, our distant neighbors, nearest house is about one mile away as the crow flies, have had issues with people stealing things out of their out, buildings and storage sheds in the area. It was also late in the year, so it was starting to get dark around 6 p.m. So, as a result, every time I would see headlights go down our road, I would watch to make sure they weren't stopping on the property. One evening, I see a vehicle going very slowly down the road and come to a stop at the end of our driveway. About 120 yards from our front porch, the vehicle is parked right in front of a 60S pickup I have parked. So I think whoever it is might be looking to steal it, or just looking over the property. Whatever the case, I decide to put on a black coat and grab my rifle to go investigate. It's dark out, so I stay out of the headlights of the vehicle so I can get close. I can tell it is a white van, but I don't see anything else distinguishing about the van. When I'm about 50 yards away, the van backs up and turns into our driveway. I freeze as the headlights wash across me standing in the middle of my driveway, and I see the reflective FedEx logos on the side of the van. Needless to say, the FedEx driver probably shit his pants as he suddenly sees a dark figure standing in the middle of a field, in the dark, holding a rifle. Surprisingly, after I try to give a friendly wave and smile, he continues up the driveway to the house, and I get to explain the situation, and we both have a laugh. So that's how I got to be the creepy guy in some FedEx delivery driver's story.